Hello, and thanks for checking out ChartGuys.com. We're proud to be one of the most successful technical analysis communities online, teaching you the skills to become a more confident, effective, and informed trader. Join our community of hundreds of analysts worldwide working together to learn the charts, generate profit, and achieve financial independence. For access to daily live chart analysis and market coverage, a thriving chat community, along with dozens of hours of exclusive educational materials. We look forward to seeing you. Let's check out some charts. Hey everyone, checking in on the USMJ names. Did the Canadian MJ names in another video? We got about 20 different tickers to go through, and we'll see how we are heading into this current week. So, looking at GWPH, these bulls are looking really good. The weekly time frame consolidated for about two months. We have broken the lower high pattern on this move on the weekly. We zoom out to the longer term time frame. The monthly chart certainly has the psychology of a cup and handle pattern here. So, we'll see if we can get a new all time high breakout heading into the summer. But looking at the weekly, or I should say the daily chart, the most important thing is these little higher lows. Our last higher low, the bulls held support down at 163.19. Anything above that keeps the uptrend intact. Close over 174 was a bullish indication on Friday. Solid little increase in bull volume. Look at the bull volume on the way up compared to the bear volume of consolidation. It's very notable that that's exactly what the bulls want to be seeing. We only have two resistance levels, 177.37 and 182.23, the all-time high. And if the bulls can keep this little daily uptrend intact this coming week, they're going to be looking up at those resistance levels. So very nice recovery for these bulls, and we'll see if we get that new all-time high in the near-term future. IIPR. So IIPR is holding on. It's pretty range-bound, range rejecting from $88 pretty much five of the last six days. We've rejected within 50 cents of 88 so that's a clear resistance level that we're watching. And the most important support for me is 82.85. So as long as we're within this range, we're just going to patiently wait for a break. And when we get a break, if we get a break of 88, we want to see a volume spike associated with it and a close over 88 to show that convincing break and follow through. If we were to lose 82.85 support, we'd zoom out to the weekly chart and we'd anticipate that this weekly chart, which has already been tightening for the last month and a half, we would anticipate that that is going to continue if we lose that support level. C-U-R-A. So it's looking like we need further consolidation. We've held up really nicely on low volume, just trading sideways, but we did close at the low of the day on Friday. So anything above 12.74 is a higher low, keeping those bulls in full control. And the all-time high is our resistance up at 15.75. So patiently looking for this higher low on the daily time frame to form. The hourly RSI is not close to oversold. If we break 1440 and don't get any follow through, then we're going to be looking at the potential of a very brief higher low and the potential of a, a bull flag even. So that's going to be an important support level to be watching on Monday. How does the price react to breaking 1440 if that does indeed occur? And like I said, if it's a, a quick pullback and we instantly make our way back over 1470, that would tell me that it's potentially a good time to get in looking for that daily higher low to form. And if we do get follow through breaking 1440, there's a gap to fill down here on the hourly chart at 1372, which will then have my attention. So I am interested in getting back in Cure Relief. I have exited the majority of my position. Pretty much anything that I'm touching short term, I have exited and I will be interested to see if I can get a good spot where I like a re-entry. C-Web is barely ha hanging on here, but it is holding on. So we have 24.28 as key support. We had another support level at 24.94, and that support broke, but only by eight cents, and then the bulls showed up. So the most important short-term resistance is up here at 27.20, because if we break that, I'm considering that an equilibrium bull break. We're calling that a double bottom defensive support right now, Close at the high of the day on Friday on a little uptick in bull volume, all about 27.20. If we break it, then we're looking at our weekly higher low being set. If we do not break it, then we're going to stay in this tightening range to start next week. So 27.20 on Monday, very key level to be watching. TRUL is also staying in a tightening range, but not getting much follow through for these bulls. Trying to shift momentum enough to, for us to be confident that a higher low compared to 1643 has formed. We're grinding the low $17 range, but I need to see the bulls break 1792. Might as well just call that 18 psychological. Have to break 18 psychological to shift that momentum to stay in this equilibrium. And I do like this equilibrium more condensed on the two day time frame. High, low, lower, high. Trying to form a higher low. We're not convinced of it yet, 
But if we break 18, we will be convinced and this equilibrium will continue to tighten. So two-day time frame for tight clarity, condensed clarity, and a four-day range that we've been within looking to break early next week. IAN, so got that follow through nicely, looking for this higher low of the equilibrium, entered a position on Thursday. So I had a core position. <clears throat> Let's just do a little recap. Entered my core position on the daily oversold conditions here these two days. I sold half of it on strength. I sold a quarter of it on this day, a quarter of it on this day, and I was left with half a core position. So from there, I'm looking for a re-entry of that half core, and I doubled down yesterday, or I should say Thursday, so doubled up the amount of shares that I had, and then I sold a quarter of them into the strength, about 4% on the bounce on Friday. So I still have half of what I loaded on Thursday, along with half of what I originally loaded back in mid-April, and my plan is going to be to exit the second half of what I entered on Thursday into strength, looking for the daily lower high compared to 722 to form, and then waiting for this equilibrium to tighten up more. And if it gets a bull break, then I'll jump back in more convincingly. But it, it's a way of locking in profit while I'm unsure of which direction this pattern is going to break. And then if we do get the break, I can go in a little bit more aggressively and be more comfortable. So I'll always have some form of a position in IAN, but I'm doing a lot of short-term swing trade shifting things around. And again, looking to exit what I entered on Thursday into strength into the upper $6 range. Ideal scenario for the bulls is to get up the closer to $7, the better. And then if we can form a higher low and see this range continue to tighten up, we'll probably stay within it. If we get a green day on Monday, we'll likely stay within this range all of next week. HARV, also, again, something we have to be aware of is shares becoming free trading. I believe HARV is one of the names that's next up on the chopping block as far as having a significant amount of shares become free trading. And that is sometime in later May, I believe. I need to relook at that uh, list that I had. But as of right now, it's not something we're immediately concerned with, but it does have some extra downside weight. If you've got 100, 200 million shares becoming free trading, we're going to look at it changing the most likely scenario. So if I see this, this pattern for IAN, and if I knew 200 million shares were becoming free trading in, at the end of May, then this equilibrium that we're anticipating, we might not see an equilibrium. We would anticipate a bit of a more bearish lean knowing that event is looming. So for Harv here, we did hold 1049 support just barely. And normally this is a scenario where we would look to stay in this equilibrium, but perhaps that downside weight of heading into that share unlock scenario in a few weeks is going to add the extra weight to get a bear break rather than stay in the tightening range. If the bulls can break the daily inside bar of 1140 bullish on Monday, then we'll call that essentially a double bottom. And then we'll look for a lower high to be set in the 12 or $13 range, 12 to mid 12 range probably. But if we do not see this inside bar break bullish, then we're just heading right back down to 1049 and a 1049 does break. We lose the weekly uptrend. Now, keep in mind, that would be a very significant shift. We want to see all these names that we are bullish on, ideally in weekly uptrends. That's when we're most comfortable. That's another reason why I'm exiting IAN and not building a large core position. We're in a daily and a weekly downtrend. And as long as that's the case, I'm not going to be playing larger positions because it's playing counter the trend. So if Harv were to lose that 1049 support, it's a weekly lower high and lower low. And that would be a notable shift. OH, daily inside bar as well. This is still a very healthy chart as we are looking for a daily higher low to form essentially. And right now, anything above 1077 would be a higher low. And again, you might say, well, what about a higher low mixed in here? And it's just a higher low every single candlestick so we don't have a clear, distinct pullback. And again, if you condense the chart and look at it a little bit differently, that's more clear. We never got a pullback. Essentially, it's a double top at the all-time high, and we're looking for a higher low compared to 1077. So if we get the bear break of this daily inside bar, again, there's no bear volume here. So worth scouting a potential entry on this daily consolidation. The hourly RSI at this point, not close to oversold, but if we drop and break $12, then that hourly RSI will be approaching oversold. 1202 is a double low, and then 1194 and 1175 come after it. But I'll be interested in OH if we do pull back a little bit further and if that hourly RSI does get oversold because we are in a weekly uptrend, we're in a daily uptrend, and hourly oversold conditions in that scenario is worth keeping an eye on. CL is pulling back a little bit more convincingly, and it's a very similar setup 
to OH, just some minor differences in here. You could make the argument that it is losing the daily uptrend. The bear volume is more notable, slightly increasing, but the key support remains 1416. And again, if we just condense the chart to see what it looks like a little bit differently, it's still a clear uptrend in that regard. So it's, a, it's very similar to the scenario for OH. Hourly RSI already did drop right down to oversold. If we do break the low of Friday, 1616 on Monday, hourly oversold conditions, and we'll be looking for the bulls to try and form a higher low compared to 1416. So keeping an eye on those two names as they are very similar, of course, as they're tied because they've got their deal pending but keeping an eye on oversold hourly conditions for those two names. MedMen continues weak. We dropped down and hit the lowest price that we've seen in a long time. Three, let's see, 346 is the only nearby support and then 311. So we're running out of support. I take that back. 355 is a level as well. So 355, actually we broke that. We dropped down to 352. So 352 is the lowest price we've seen in a long time. 346 and then the all-time low of 311 is next. Anything on the daily time frame under 382 is just a lower high. I have no interest in MedMen whatsoever until we start shifting some trends more clearly. There's a lack of support. And the last thing that you want to be in is a name that hits black dirt breakdown all time lows because there is no support and things can get ugly. So keeping an eye on it, change the daily trend, and I'll start having some potential interest in MedMen, but that's not going to happen within the next couple of days. KSHB has dropped down significantly. The daily RSI did drop down right towards oversold. Defending the low of 477 and 480, it was a daily inside bar that has to break bullish on Monday to change the hourly trend and have us looking for a daily bounce. Keeping in mind, anything on the daily chart under 570 is just a lower high. We're not looking to change any daily trends. We would just look to bounce and form a lower high. But looking at the longer term perspective, we have a weekly bear break of an equilibrium. And checking the monthly longer term perspective, we would lose the monthly uptrend if we lose 437 support. So the bulls still have a lot of space to work with there, but we've seen a very clear sentiment shift. If we're looking at subsectors within the MJ space, KSHB, CVSI, they're falling off. They're not MSOs. Right now, the focus is on multi-state operators in the US and even on CNBC. That's what they're talking about. And they said very recently within the last week, you know, if, you, if you're playing the US MJ space, it's got to be MSOs. So that's a narrative that is taking hold. And while they have great revenue and things like that, it's not as alluring to traders and investors as those multi-state operators with the potential of these buyouts and mergers and premiums on deals. CVSI. So I did make an initial entry in CVSI as well. And we do have earnings approaching, I believe they're the eighth. So Wednesday is the last that I saw. I'm looking to get in, and this is a psychological play. Number one, oversold conditions, not on the daily, but if we look at the four-hour RSI, it dropped down right at oversold, and the hourly RSI was also right at oversold as we broke five psychological. So I made an initial entry on the break of five psychological, and we didn't get much follow through there. We broke 502, and we dropped down to 496, about 1% to follow through before the bounce took place. It's not a meaningful bounce at this point, but my my... Thoughts on this trade are as we head towards earnings, whether it's a very bullish move or a very bearish move heading into earnings, I look for the days leading up into those earnings to see some profit taking because if the trend is significant and has been prolonged for a couple weeks as this pullback has, you got to figure that anybody that's short CVSI is probably going to lock in some profit as they are up 10, 20 plus percent in just two weeks time. Why risk holding into earnings, not knowing what the gamble on reaction is going to be when you can lock in some profit. And there's the, the likes, the opposite side is the psychology of someone saying, wow, this is the cheapest that CVSI has been in multiple months. We're significantly pulling back. Maybe we can get a discount heading into these earnings. So those two psychological mindsets on a move heading into earnings is why I made this entry. And I'm not looking for anything significant. I got in at 499, up 1% at this point. It's a smaller position. And if we do see bounce follow through, I would be looking to exit before the earnings reaction and just looking for a few percent to the upside. Ideal scenario would be a break of 516 on Monday, which would be the first clear shift in momentum and break of the lower high pattern every day after eight days in a row. And at that point, it would be plus 3% on the trade, and that would be good enough for me to begin scaling out. Longer term for a CVSI is still a weekly uptrend. Anything above 433 keeps the bulls in control of the weekly uptrend, which is another reason 
why I'm looking for the potential of the bulls to attempt to show up before earnings. NBEV. So NBEV is a tightening daily pattern as well, but it's a little bit ugly and choppy. Things getting really tight as far as the last three days go. 502 is a clear base of support, as is 505. If we break 505, it's 502 and then 5 psychological. And we just have a real tight range here. If we look at the hourly time frame the last three days, a clear equilibrium. Or actually, it's a descending triangle. Horizontal base of 505 and then just a lower high, 519 in extended hours, another lower high at 518 and another lower high at 516. So a tightening hourly range if the daily inside bars break bullish. That tells us we're staying in this daily range and we would look for a lower high in the mid $5 range if it breaks bearish. A break of $5 and we are dropping down to the 470s as the next level to be looking for an area of support. SNN weak bounce underway, no bull volume whatsoever. So have to be cautious of a bear flag. If we get an hourly trend change with no follow through, then the scenario of a bear flag is there. This is also an inverse head and shoulders potential. So the bulls must see follow through with the left shoulder, the head and the right shoulder. And both resistances are lining up 457 and 451. If the bulls are going to shift this momentum, they have to break 451 and 457 at the same time, see a volume spike with it. And then we would zoom out to the daily chart and just be looking for a lower high because anything under 525 is just a lower high at this point. And looking at the longer term after this bearish reaction, I assume it was a bearish reaction to earnings, but I haven't been following the fundamentals of SNN. But after 423, which we did break, we're looking at 418, which is a double low. And there's nothing below 418 nearby. So that's a very important support level. And the bulls are hoping to break this pattern bullish. But if we do not, certainly a red flag on the longer term timeframes. PLTH. So PLTH, the daily consolidation is healthy. And this is the scenario where we break the uptrend and see no follow through. So that tells me a weekly bull flag is forming. And it certainly is at this point. And this is a good looking chart. So just the sense that we have the all-time high, we didn't get a follow-through break of the all-time high, and we rejected after a 10-cent move, but if we can form another higher low here and then make another attempt, that's going to be ideal for the bulls. We need to see a shift in momentum. Best case scenario for the bulls is hold 305 and turn around and break 344 this coming week. That would change the daily trend. That would tell us our weekly higher low has been set, and we'd be looking for a move back to all-time highs to confirm the weekly bull flag. You can see we've been within this range now for six trading days. No bear volume on Friday. Things getting tight. Let's see if it's clear on the four hour. And just a tight range. Worth watching for a volume spike and a break of this tightening range to indicate the weekly higher low has been established. SLNG, equilibrium. So the range right now is 228 to 262 support. The bulls are attempting to form a higher low compared to 228. If we can break 249 on Monday, we'll say our higher low has been established. It's getting tighter and tighter at this point. And just looking at it on the four hour time frame, there's our low, high, trying for a higher low, but we haven't seen enough bounce yet to call that our higher low. So another equilibrium that is tightening up and should see a break this coming week. PYX. So PYX has to change this daily trend by breaking... 2370. We have our low, high of the bounce, significant pullback with increasing bear volume is a red flag. Ideally, the bulls would have pulled back, held $20, and then seen continuation. We pulled back very significantly from that top, giving back by the end of it. Let's see, we gave back four plus dollars, so that is over 16%. Daily inside bar. If that breaks bullish, our higher low is set at 1815. If it breaks bearish, we're looking right back down to 1666. If it does break bullish, we will look to stay in this tightening pattern and we will look for a lower high compared to 2375, but bulls want to show up and break that bullish to give us our new daily higher low and try and change this daily trend over the next week or two. ZYNE, so the harder you run up, the harder you pull back, two days of pullback erased, six days, or five days of bullish action. That being said, the volatility is awesome for opportunity. First hourly oversold, coming off of a very significant bull move is a good entry for a bounce. Look at this exponential support. Day after day, higher lows established off of it. We fell through it, and then it started acting as resistance, rejecting from all these exponential moving averages, a leg down. Look at the top of the bounce right off of it. So this is the kind of chart that I look at, 
And if we have a name that's going back and forth over these moving averages, I won't care about the moving averages. But when you see it respected this well from both directions, it is absolutely worth watching. And here we are back with its support. So support for four days, we lose it. It's resistance on one, two, three, four rejections. We regain it. And now it's holding its support multiple times. This is the one hour, 12 and 26 exponential moving average. I used it for cryptocurrency and loved how the price reacted to it. And this is a perfect example of a stock respecting those. So we did see an oversold bounce that bounced from 957 to 1139. Very significant bounce. Not going to try and do that math in my head. On the fly, almost 20%. So then we dropped down and held a higher low and then saw a higher high. The most important short-term hourly support is down at, a, make that 1085 and then 995. And the bulls need a break of 1183 in order to see continuation of this move. But looking at it on the daily chart, we would anticipate the most likely scenario is for a daily lower high to form because of how significant that pullback was. So we have the high of the bull move, the low of the pullback, and I would look for a lower high to form compared to 1306 and to stay within this tightening range for at least the first few days of this coming week. Looking at it on the weekly perspective, weekly charts due for consolidation. This weekly chart, the last higher low that we established was 446. That was a long time ago. So just be aware that a, an indication of weekly consolidation would be the high, low, fail to break th 1306, and then come down and break 957. Right now, the bulls still have favor with where we stand and the significance of the bounce that we did see. So not looking at weekly consolidation yet, but just aware that that weekly consolidation is overdue. BAMM, -M, nice oversold bounce here as well, but didn't quite nearly get back anywhere close to that top of 371. Looks like we topped out compared to, let's see, we set a lower high at 259, and now we're pulling back, and the bulls must hold 155 and break 259 to change this momentum back in favor of the bulls. Otherwise... This weekly consolidation can continue. Tons of volatility here as well. Certainly high risk, high reward. And it's all about 155 and 259 as a range. And again, that's just a huge range that we've explored in only the last three, four days. TILT, bearish reaction to earnings. And these upper wicks are not a good sign. That shows selling pressure. That shows the that we have someone selling shares whenever there's bullish opportunity or shorts jumping in and I shouldn't say bullish opportunity, on bullish attempts for recovery. 213 was support. We did break it, but we might be looking at another bear flag. There's the four-hour chart, unimpressive bounce, the hourly time frame. There's an hourly trend change with zero follow-through. We had a higher low. We broke resistance by four pennies and then gave it all right back. So this is a bear flag setup at this point. And if we lose that little hourly higher low pattern from the last two days, we're looking down at 210 and two psychological as the next levels from there. I will be interested in tilt when we break the weekly downtrend, but at this point, the momentum the bulls were trying to build was completely erased by the bearish reaction that we had to earnings. So that's where we stand on the U.S. space overall. The most important factor for me will continue to be, number one, what's the S&P 500 doing? That has the most weight for me in the MJ sector. Number two, what is CGC doing? That has the second most weight for me in the MJ sector. And then from there, the individual names and what they're all doing on their own. So I appreciate you watching. We will check back in on Monday. We have some nice uptrends to still be watching. Names forming daily higher lows. Names looking for hourly oversold bounces to form their daily higher lows. Otherwise, we have a lot of weakness out there in other names. So important to distinguish who's in daily and weekly uptrends, who is not. The names that are, I personally am a lot more comfortable holding for a few days for short-term swing trades as opposed to just quick flips in and out. Thanks again. We'll see you Monday. Have a good rest of your weekend. Don't forget to watch the market video for SPY Update.